Welcome back. We're on Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 25. Abraham was justified by faith. Chapter 4, verse 17, the initial plan. Verse 17 says, as it's written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Can we look at a definition of who gives life to the dead? Abraham believed that God could bring life from Sarah's dead womb, Romans 4, 19. And that if he sacrificed his son Isaac in obedience to God, then God would raise Isaac from the dead to fulfill his promise of descendants through Isaac, Genesis 22. Let's look at another definition here. Calls things that are not. Abraham knew that God created the world from nothing and could create a son and a myriad of nations from what looked like nothing. Now catch this point. From the beginning, God's plan of salvation, which began with Abraham, extended beyond the Jews to all the nations of the world. God's plan was never just to keep it with the Jews. God's plan was never just to keep it with the Old Covenant. It was always to extend it and extend grace and salvation to the entire world. The text says, I have made you a father of many nations. It was God's plan right from the beginning. Paul's description of God is consistent with how the Jews have always understood God. Thus, Paul's point is that salvation by faith has been God's plan from the very beginning. Beginning. It's always been God's plan. God never had a plan that it's supposed to be through through ceremony that we come to Christ. It's supposed to be through obedience that, that we're given eternity. It's, it's always been faith. It's always been place our faith in him and do things the way that God wants us to by believing him first and then acting. It's always been his plan right from day one. Chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, Abraham's belief. Verse 18 and 19 say, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. In faith, Abraham believed. It's exactly what the text says, against all hope. Abraham, in hope, believed. Abraham realized that God's ability was, was far greater than his, exer- his circumstances. So what if I'm 99? So what if I'm 100? So what if I'm 150? So what if I'm 1,000? God's ability is, is far better, is far greater than our, our, our circumstances. Abraham's faith was not an irrational decision, but rather a deliberate choice to place his confidence in God. We place our confidence in God, not some idea, not some kind of wishful thinking, but God has revealed something, and we place our confidence in that thing that God has revealed. What has God revealed specifically to us? Place your faith in Jesus so that you can have eternity. Abraham had only God's promises to hold on to and nothing else, just like you and I. God says, place your faith in Jesus and I will give you eternity. We can't see eternity. We can't see the path forward. We only know that we place our faith in Jesus and God will give us eternity. Well, that's what it was like for Abraham too. Chapter 4, verse 20, Abraham's test. Abraham's test. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Abraham took God at his word and committed to his decision to his belief. Yes, he did have some up and downs, and yeah, he did waffle along the way just just a little bit, but you know, he never gave up on God, and he always believed that God's promise was going to come about, and sometimes he figured, you know, in the case of Ishmael, sometimes he figured, yeah, you know, I think that God might need a little help, and sometimes you and I, you know, I think God might need a little help. You know what? God is true to his promises, and Abraham believed that. Abraham could not offer God more than simple trust, yet God accepted his trust. You and I can't offer God more than a simple trust. That's all that we have to offer, and that's what God accepts. It's what he's looking for, even from us. Abraham's faith increased with experience as he repeatedly acted upon trust. And we can see that as Abraham's story unfolds. We can see that his faith, his trust in God grows. And as you and I continue to live out our life for Jesus, our trust in God will grow. That's an experience thing. God doesn't let us down. And the longer you and I live as a Christian, as a believer, as somebody who says, yes, I'm living my life completely for you, God, our experience increases and our trust for God also grows. Chapter 4, verse 21, consistency. Verse 21, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Abraham consistently trusted God obeyed God, and waited for God to keep his word. Can you say that? Can I say that? I know that I can't say that, but Abraham consistently did. 
Let, let's take his example. Let's continue to grow in our experience and consistently believe God and take him at his word and let's grow our trust in God like Abraham grew in his. Chapter 4, verse 22, fully convinced, fully convinced. Verse 22 says, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Faith, let's talk about faith. Faith is being fully convinced and relying on nothing but God. We rely on nothing but God. I mean, you and I, same thing as Abraham. God has revealed his intentions. God has revealed his truth in his word. You and I go to the Bible, and you and I read all of the intentions and everything that God has communicated through the Bible, and we go on nothing else except God. And nothing else but God, we, we rely on that, and we, we become fully persuaded that the Bible is true, and then we consistently live according to that. That's what faith is. Chapter 4, verse 23, our Abraham faith. Our Abraham faith. Verse 23 says, the words it was credited to him were written not for him alone. Oh, really? Then for who else? Well, for you and I, actually. If we follow the example of Abraham by exercising the same kind of faith that he exercised, we will also be accepted by God. So if you and I do the same thing that Abraham did, which was simply believe God, then you and I can expect that we'll receive the same reward that Abraham did. So we believe God, and our belief is also going to be credited as righteousness, just like Abraham's belief was. Chapter 4, verse 24, God's word. Talk about the Bible, God's word. Verse 24 says, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. God's word is trustworthy. The Bible is trustworthy, the text says, but also for us. Paul challenges the original readers, and he challenges us, to base hope on the written word, to base our faith on the written word. God has revealed himself through the Bible. The Bible is God's self-revelation. It is the only thing that reveals God. It's the only thing uh, that's qualified to reveal God because God is the only one qualified to talk about himself. God is the only one qualified to reveal truth. That's what we have in the Bible. Please use the Bible as your exclusive source for truth. God's transaction with Abraham is universally valid. It was preserved in scripture for later generations to read. So when we go to the Bible, when we read how God uh, was using other people and what God did with other people, we can say, oh, wait a minute, there's a good example for me to follow. Abraham believed God and was credited as righteousness, therefore I can trust that. If I believe God, I will also be credited with righteousness. Please use the Bible as your exclusive source for truth. Don't go anywhere else because God alone is the one who can tell us this is truth. This is how to get to eternity. Trust me because I'm here. I'm going to tell you how to get there. Paul is directing readers to the same kind of faith that Abraham had, but the object of that faith is Jesus, the fulfillment of what, uh, what Abraham never saw. So these days, you and I look back to the Gospels, and we look back to Jesus, and we place our faith in Jesus. In the Old Covenant, people looked forward to Jesus. He hadn't come yet, but he, they were looking forward to the promise, and that promise is Jesus. What we look back to, they used to look forward to. But you know what? Faith is based on that same one person, one God person that came, Jesus. That's what the faith of the Old Covenant, covenant and the New Covenant is based on, faith on Jesus. Chapter 4, verse 25, the effect of Jesus. Let's look at the verse who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Uh, let's just look at some definitions here. Uh, delivered, sins, raised, justified, all that. For here means on account of. Jesus was delivered to death in order to atone for our sins, on account of our sins. And he was raised to guarantee our justification, encourage us to put faith in that justification. You know, Jesus took the penalty that we deserved by his death. And when he did that, he proved that his death was effective when he rose again. Because we see that Jesus rose again, you and I can say, oh, that, that was effective. He paid our penalty. And now he promises, this is the hope that we have. Now he promises that just as he was raised again physically, you and I who place our faith in him, we will also be looking forward to a physical resurrection as well. The, the physical res resurrection, I don't think that part's in the text. What's in the text is that Jesus' resurrection affirms that his death is actually working for us. Let's look at a, sum a summary for chapter four. Abraham is our forefather. That is a difficult phrase to understand simply uh, taken at face value because clearly we are not related to Abraham if we are not Jewish. Yet, lineage is the key point of misunderstanding. Abraham discovered that righteousness comes by faith, not by deeds. God does not declare actions righteous because righteousness is not a matter of good and evil. Righteousness is an affirmative response to God's promise and a submission to him. 
When we submit to God, in, in essence, God says to us, now that's good, or now that's right. Abraham set the example of placing faith in God. When we place our faith in God and exercise the same kind of faith that Abraham exercised, we follow in Abraham's footsteps and can be called children of Abraham. The common misconception is that Abraham was awarded righteousness based on his deeds as measured by the law. However, when we read scripture in context, we learn that Abraham was declared righteous before the law was given and before the sign of circumcision was given, the sign that God had identified and sealed him as a righteous man in a covenant relationship with him. Abraham could not have been declared righteous by observing the law when the law was to be introduced about 400 years after he died. From the beginning, Abraham had faith in God apart from observing any part of the law at all. The faith that Abraham had while he was still a Gentile, by the way, is the same kind of faith that God wants from us. Can I please encourage you to leave a comment? Can you please encourage you to leave a comment? Now, maybe you could answer one of these three questions. One, two, three. First of all, what did I hear? Did you hear something from God's word that just sort of jumped out to you and you want to share it? Please tell us, this is what I heard from the text. What does it mean? After you said, this is what I heard from the text, I'm pretty sure that this is what it means. And thirdly, what do I need to do about it? Okay, I heard something from God. I'm pretty sure this is what it means. And I think that this is what I need to do about it. God bless you. I'll see you next time.